Two popular questions are, what does it mean to be wealthy? And what does it mean to have wealth? Well, it's both objective and subjective. And what does all that have to do with well-being? Well, we're going to chop it up. You'd be shocked to know that people with wealth don't feel wealthy. <laughs> Let's unpack that. My name is Dr. Preston Cherry, founder and CEO of Concurrent Financial Planning, of which this podcast is brought to you by. Here we let your life lead your money. And if you are ready on your journey, then visit the website concurrentfp.com and schedule your no cost good fit meeting. And as always, like and subscribe to the show to make sure you get your information as always. All right, let's unpack this question about wealth. I recently had a show with uh, downtown Josh Brown, shout out about debunking spending myths of the wealthy. So check that out. But right here, I want to focus on, I want to focus on what does it mean to be wealthy? Because folks ask this question a lot. And another question, corresponding question is, well, what are wealthy people doing with their money or what rich people are doing with their money? And I like to start off with saying that the concept of wealth and well-being are two different aspects. And we have these dimensions of well-being. There are eight of them that we all are trying to achieve. You are trying to flourish, thrive, and be in these eight dimensions of well-being. They are states of being. And those eight dimensions are emotional, occupational, spiritual, physical, intellectual, financial, environmental, and social. So those are the eight dimensions of well-being. And when we're trying to flourish in those areas, we're trying to transfer money into those areas. And that's where wealth comes in. Wealth is a dollar amount. It's about an amount, how much we are building, earning, and then transferring into assets. So income to assets, assets to wealth and transferring that amount over into our flourishing areas. And the reason why I like to say that wealth and well-being are two different aspects, because when folks try to blend together these two aspects, it kind of discounts the role that money plays in our lives. Money is essential. <laughs> it's not just a tool. A tool is a unit that has no soul. It's, it's something that helps you do something. Okay, yes, I mean, you hear that a lot, that money is a tool, but it has no soul. But money is a partner. It is, you are in a relationship with that entity, right? And you are in a relationship trying to accomplish a goal. It has soul. It's essential in your life. And that's what money is. It's money is part of our daily economy. It's a part of what we do every day. It funds our, our needs and the roof over our head and the essentials that we need. And it also funds those thriving elements that we need to have for, and they call them wants, right? Of how we're going to thrive in life, how we're going to build ourselves up and invest in ourselves. So when we're talking about these dimensions of flourishing, you use your finances to flourish and that doesn't discount the, the essentialness of, of money. All right. Let's go over a few facts about what it means to be a wealth objectively from the reports. There was a Schwab report here recently that said it took about $2.2 million for folks to feel, you know, wealthy. I'm using these air quotes because wealthy and well-being are states of being that are personal to you. It's how you define your life, where you want your life to be both now and in the future. That's why I say, you know, wealthy is in the eye of the beholder because you're using your finances to fund your well-being, and thus the overview of what these two dimensions are. Because once you are going through the wealth building process, building up your finances enough to fund your enough, how you define it, because you are determining, that's why you let your life lead your money. 
you are determining what levels of well-being across these eight dimensions of life that you want to fund. All right. What is that? And once you determine what that enough is, then you 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 have a feeling of fulfillment uh, when you get to that that particular level and said, you know what, my dollars, my money is purchasing the level of well-being that our household aspires to have now and in the future, I have enough. Or you either come to a conclusion to where you have had enough <laughs> of whatever you're doing and you say, I'm going to make this work and flourish in the well-being that is here in the now because that's going to make me feel better. So this $2.2 million to feel wealthy in air quotes, that's on average. And then when we're talking about averages in the top 10 and 5 and 1% of the U.S. citizens, all right, for the top 10% income and net worth is about 191,000 in income and 100,000 to a million in net worth. Top 5%, 336,000 in income, and then also $3.8 million in net worth. Top 1% of households make about 819, $820,000 in income and have 10 to $13 million in net worth. Okay. So those are somewhat of the, the categories of income and wealth as far as the top 10, five and 1% objectively based on statistics. And uh, those folks that are listening to this podcast, you're in your anywhere between 30s and 50s, perhaps approaching uh, 60s. You know, folks are building themselves up into this seven figure net worth in order to fund their future selves. But they're also trying to live their current selves as well and trying to build good habits or make decisions or see where you should be compared to others or compared to some rule of thumb. A good rule of thumb is a good standard to try to uh, gauge where you are so you can get back on your track, not necessarily a track that's defined by you know some superficial arbitrary number or or dream. Okay. What is your dream? What a rule of thumb may do is say, okay, here's a roundabout number. Then then how is a roundabout number and pathway about where I am compared to where I want to be? Okay. So the rule of thumb is good. What I don't want you to do is get into a habit of comparing yourself to others, all right? Because when we hear the question of what are the wealthy doing with their money, it's no different than what you can do with your money, okay? You can do the same things. Uh, mindset, self-worth, self-value. You know, I dropped a self-worth, self-value dime on someone and they were like, oh, I'm not sure if that's uh, that has anything to do with it. Well, this is somewhat limiting belief sometimes. Or do you, what do you value? You know, do you value yourself enough in order to invest across the eight dimensions of well being, right? Your flourishing areas and to allocate those dollars toward those areas. Do you value yourself enough to do that, right? If you give, if your life and money have alignment, then you can give your money assignments. And this is where that self value comes from. All right. You value yourself enough to align your life and money to then give your money assignments and then self worth. You know, are you worthy of goods and services? Are you worthy of more time? Are you worthy of having aspirational thoughts? Are you? Uh, bold aspirational thoughts. How do you want your life to be now and in the future? Right? Are you worthy of living, uh, you know, a prosperous life? Are you worthy of having, you know, investments for the future and emergency funds for now? All of that. If you value yourself and have worthiness of yourself, then you can give that life and money alignment and give your dollars assignment. Here's a, a few areas where people say, well, what are the wealthy doing with their money that you know, other folks are not doing? Well, they value time. They value time. 
And we can all value our time. If you, you can use your, your dollars in order to buy yourself more time. Well, obviously we can't buy more divine time, but we can buy more efficiency and effectiveness with our time. For instance, you buy a laundry service. All right. That's a service. Give you more time. Purchase a, a in-home nanny or a part-time nanny to help take care of your children. Potentially somebody told me about a night nanny. All right. Whereas you could help on your sleep. If you're getting better sleep, that means you're waking up the next day, feeling more refreshed and you get to go out in life and go after your purpose and hopefully produce more income. Right. And this is how these aspects, you know, help you thrive. How about purchasing when you're a business owner, you're purchasing, you know, virtual assistants or adding more people to your team, more vendors, right? Leveraging services. There's a host of ways to value your time and allocating your dollars to the things that you value. What else do some of the, the wealthy here? I got a list. They invest, they invest, but so, so can you, you can, you can invest in yourself. So you're talking about investing uh, concentration in yourself, building up oneself, a skill in order to produce the income that you need in order to get to the assets and the wealth that you need, right? So this is education. One common thread in folks that have six figures, wealth or self, quote unquote, self-made. I have a whole write-up about being self-made. Nobody's truly self-made because you've had transference of, of hope and resources and so on and so forth. But self-made without an inheritance. But for those that are self-made, education is one of the common themes. So it, investing in information or even time in your craft, okay? Building oneself up, okay? Investing your finances into the stock market, into potentially real estate. And I always say that uh, real estate is passive income defined by tax. That's a tax standard, but not passive involvement. And ownership. So that's a whole nother episode. We'll get into that. Okay. But they invest T taking your, earn your income, transferring your income into assets and assets to wealth. Okay. You know what? Wealthy, rich, wealthy, whatever you want to define it. Well, there's two different ways or, you know, rich is, is one aspect and then wealthy is, is, is another, which is mo mostly income. Wealth is, is assets. Uh, but they, they enjoy to trust me on this one quality goods and services and even luxury. Okay. So you don't have to explain what you do with your money to others. You also don't have to justify it to you, your financial advisor or society. If it's with, within these four P's, okay. You got to eat your peas. <laughs> it is purpose, your preferences, your process, your plan equals prosper, okay? Purpose, preference, process, and plan equals how you can prosper. And if you have the bandwidth, okay, or the means to, uh, you know, purchase goods, quality goods and services, even luxury that's within your plan, then do so without explanation to, anyone because you are following your plan. You have saved and invested. You have identified your goals. You've went through the process. All right. So this uh, mindset or belief that you have to be extremely frugal and deprive yourself of any type of fulfillment from material goods or service goods or, you know, luxury experiences or whatever it may be that that is of quality, of premium, of luxury, of quality, then that, that's false, all right? This is where it comes to back to self-worth, self-value, all right? Are you worthy of that, all right? Do you value a good product or a good service so you can have it because you, lo you love yourself, all right? Not in a conceited way. It's, it's self-belief. It's self-love for you and your family, all right? So if it's within your plan, Frugal means differently to different folks. You don't have to live below your means. You have to live within. And frugal means means differently to different folks because folks have different means. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are bars right there. All right. So another area, emergency funds. 
And I know this, uh, some folks think that this is you know, a rudimentary topic, but it is not. Emergency funds are cash on hand in order to uh, help with the ebbs and flows of life. This also goes back to well-being. Okay? Uh, life is uncertain, but uncertainty is certain, going to happen. Okay? Life is ebbs and flows. Uh, my mom and dad said, we got to roll and adapt. All right. And uh, life is not always sweet, not always rosy. Yeah, we are going to have challenges. We are going to have trials. Okay. And those emergency funds help with unexpected events and unexpected times. So those emergency funds, when you're talking about when you have gotten a lot of momentum and in your high earning years and you are, you are thriving, seven, eight months, 12 months, two years. Okay. Now you don't have to have that just sitting in the bank. You can, you could do a lot of things. You could do, you, you, know, you could possibly consider treasure bonds, CDs, high yield savings accounts, a, a whole host of strategies. Okay. But having some money, so you won't have to overreact when there's choppiness in markets. Okay. So emergency fund cash is king or queen. All right. Just, you just have to have a strategy in order or inflation not to eat it up and all that, but there's, that's a whole nother topic. Okay. Another area is protection. All right. Being mindful of, of outside risks to, you know, to, to your money. Now, once you get up to a certain level uh, of, of means, you can self-insure, then there's ways to where you could use your assets. If your assets are of value and you need to protect them, not only through insurance, but asset protection strategies. All right. So that is another way of, of where, you know, the wealthy use their assets and protect them in order to uh, help them thrive and where they want to go. The, the couple of strategies, it, it's a whole nother show. But the, the key thing here I want you to, to take home is, is that is to use your dollars. Okay. Use your wealth of money. Okay. How you define your life now and in the future, all right, is your well-being. And then have that dollar amount in order to fund those well-being aspects. So when the question is, how does it feel to be wealthy? Or what does it mean to be wealthy? Well, it is having the money to purchase the well-being flourishing goals across those eight dimensions of well-being to do what you want, how you want, where you want. So when people talk about freedom, flexibility, time, all of those areas, they say, I want an abundance of time. I want to be free, flexible, all of that, right? Those are states of well-being. I want to allocate my time towards, look at those eight dimensions again, right? Emotional, occupational, spiritual, physical, intellectual, financial, environmental, and societal or social. Okay. Those are states of well-being. What does it mean to be wealthy is having the dollars to fund your flourishing moments. Okay. Using your finances to flourish. And in that way, it really helps you focus on the importance of building your wealth how you define it, all right, by defining what your state of well-being is across those eight dimensions of well-being. It's more than a tool, money. It's part of your self-economy. It is essential. It is your partner in life. All right. That's what I got for you. If you like seeing and feel what you heard, then like and subscribe to the show, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.